Hi, my name is Jeff Pagano, and welcome to the Harpen and Rugby Preview Show. And joining me to look ahead to Leinster's URC assignment in Newport this weekend is someone back for a cap number 27. Hello to Mr. Rugby Kino himself, Keenan Willor. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having us back. No problem. Good to have you. Uh, so, Kino, before we get to the match in question, there was an announcement made during the week on Leinster's captaincy for the season. And just last weekend, yourself, myself, and Connor Cronin harped on this very topic for our YouTube bonus clip. Here's a little taste of it. Yeah, I mean, there's always the possibility where they name two captains, you know, and, and you see it on the see it on the sheet that they are co-captains, co-captains or, yeah. or wh- whatever other term you want to use for it. Um, and you could see a logic behind that as yeah. well. Because... Co- co- co-captains, bollocks. It's like a participation yeah. medal. <laughs> yeah. Why bother? Well, um, as we all know, they actually have gone for co-captains in uh, Gary Ringrose and James Ryan. So is it still bollocks, Kino? Uh, yeah, I guess this is why I'm not in charge of a of of, of, an, of a top level elite rugby club, I suppose. Yeah, I, I still don't like co captains. I, I I just it's it's a bit meaningless for me to be honest. I mean, you know, who's even in charge really when it all comes down to it? It's going to be one or the other. Like there's a pecking order there. It's not really co captains, is it? Um, but you know, that said, there's probably situations where two heads are better than one might reduce individual pressure a little bit. The and you know, and it was very hard for me to choose between the two anyway. They're both amply qualified, ready to step up. But uh yeah, I just, you know, first captain, second captain, whatever. Good. That'd be a good name for a podcast. Yeah, actually. I, I, might, I might, might yeah. change it. Yeah, I might change this to whatever from now on. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, listen, um, no, I know what you mean. It's uh it it is kind of a it it has a ring of falling between two stools about it, but um, it depends on, I suppose, how they actually implement it. I can see how making the announcement and bestowing the honor, um, sharing it equally between two people. When like we we talked about it for ten minutes, we couldn't really we couldn't really decide. It was like it was like you know, Ryan would be the pick of the forwards and Ringrose would be the pick of the backs. I suppose of, of the of the leading candidates. That's kind of who we landed on. But when it comes on the day of a match. If they're both picked, are they going to... I mean, the Irish women's team did this recently. They had co-captains on the pitch at the same time. And I think that's what I'm not a fan of myself, um, you know, for the for the one match. I think it, it, if it's a situation where, you know, they, they hopefully they will just name one captain on a day. Do you know what I mean? It's it's But um, teams are starting to do this now. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, I suppose. Anyway, listen. Um, so anyway, now it's time to look at our feature match of the week, which is, of course, uh, Leinster v. Dragons in uh, round four of the 23-24 United Rugby Championship. It's taking place at Rodney Parade in Newport on Sunday, November 12th, kicking off at 1.15 p.m. TV coverage in Ireland is on RT2, Premier Sports 1, and URC.TV. And as ever, you can find the full listings for the weekend on harpandrugby.com. Just click the Rugby on TV tab. Now, Leinster named their match day 23 at lunchtime on Friday. If you're watching on YouTube, it's right there in the screen. Or for pod listeners, it's in the program notes. Aquino has selected three Harpen points from the squad, and we've already looked at club captains, but there's yet another new Leinster skipper leading the side out on Sunday. Yeah, Don Sheehan gets his uh, first shout as a uh, captain for Leinster this weekend. You know, it's a a further expansion into the leadership group. You know, as Scott as with Scott Penny there last weekend. Um, you know, I mean, as a player, he's obviously he's good enough. Um, and doubtless he has the respect of his teammates. You know, he's had a meteoric rise into uh into international rugby as one of the top players in his position. But captaining is a it's a whole other ball game. It's a whole different skill set. So it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on with it. Um, Rodney Parade, not the friendliest place to go and play in the world. It's pretty famously <laughs> not that friendly. Um, on the pitch, um, at least it's not a sand pit anymore. But uh, nonetheless, it's going to be a fairly stern test. Um, of, of a first outing, I think, in that sense. Yeah, one of the things we spoke about when we were talking about captaincy is the dealing with the referee and uh, when it's a kind of a hostile environment where everything Leinster is going to do is wrong and everything the Dragons are going to do is right from the crowd's point of view um it's going to be a t- it's going to be a big big test for him but uh, no it, I mean it's like we all, like I think ideally if you had to pick 
uh, ideal positions for captains. Hooker and Locke are probably the two best. I'm mean, sometimes, you know, okay, uh, maybe blind side or open side as well, but um, it's generally in the forwards anyway. But uh, so some of the best captains have been have been hookers, and uh, it's it, it's a good opportunity for him to get some leadership experience he could bring into the Ireland team down the line. You know. But um, going on to your second point, anyway, he's one of uh, many returning internationals. I mean, it's a far cry from the days of uh, Leinster going to Newport uh, early in the season with Bernard Jackman and a rake of academy lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Reese Ruddock All Stars are not the ones making the trip this time. Um, they're they're they or they've certainly got a, a nice uh, a, a nice smattering of stars to go along with them. Um, along with Dan, there's uh, Ross Byrne back in. Um, big season for Ross now. He's numero uno. Uh, in that ten journey jersey, uh, he's gonna have to have a pretty big season, I think, to keep the uh, chasing pack from his heels. Because, as everyone knows, <laughs> we love having a big stack of fly halves available at Leinster. Uh, Jimmy O'Brien is back as well. Uh, didn't get to play much the, at the World Cup, so no doubt he'll be raring to go and uh, go, get back to um form for the uh, upcoming European Games later in the season. Um, I'm expecting. Joe McCarthy's there as well, expecting him to kick on this season um, as well and really start putting his hand up for first team consideration. Um, he's he's young, but uh, he has that physical profile that if he can bring his game on um, and really push for first team consideration, it'll it'll help uh, in that late season push a lot. And uh, then Ryan Baird, I think he's back as well. I think we're going to see him a lot more in six this jersey more often than not. Um, he is my favorite line break runner. Um, in the Leinster side of the moment, I love that loping baby giraffe gait he has. But that is also extremely dangerous. It's like a loping baby giraffe with a shotgun. Yep, <laughs> rampage. Yeah, definitely. It's um, it's 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 interesting the way they've the, the way they've been selecting the teams because I mean you you notice <clears throat> from the first three matches there's so it's the same kind of core team with you know one or two changes there and then but even this week there's a lot of that team still there and they've kind of fed in gradually um they peppered around like they should say five 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 internationals probably didn't get a lot of game time but it's still the bulk like uh, you know Cohan's getting another shot at uh, number eight and uh, Jack Boyle's there at uh, number one there's a lot of um you know there's a lot of the the, the centers are the same that you know it, it's it's an interesting way they're they're kind of gradually being uh, introduced uh, introduced to the squad but uh, you for your third point you want to talk a bit about the younger players in the team as well yeah, yeah, it's it's essentially it leads on directly from that. It's great to see them keep the uh, young players in there and to, I mean, I think five is probably the most changes you can make while keeping some level of continuity between them. But it's the, uh, it's for a large part, it's the younger players, uh, certainly in the pack, who are uh, getting uh, kept through um, into this, into this uh, kind of mixed side. Um, ben Murphy getting his first uh, start, um, which is, which is great to see. Um, but, uh, yeah, Cormac Foley had been going really well as well. Um, it's good that he he's on the bench and he he'll get he'll get his shot, no doubt. Uh, under fairly trying conditions weather wise, by the looks of things. Um, Lee Barron as well. He was going very nicely around the field. Um, he was going very nicely around the field last week. He was good value. Um, for in the carry. Uh, James Culhan had an absolute cracker on and off the ball against Evan Ross again. He's probably my kind of my one to watch at the moment so far this season for Leinster. Um if he keeps <laughs> I don't know if he can keep uh going up at this uh at this trajectory, but uh if he can, um he's going to be causing some serious selection issues down the line. Um and I'm hoping Jack Boyle he's had a bit of a torrid time of it. You know, we've had some really um naive front rows uh, over the last couple of weeks. So I'm hoping now that uh, with, a, you know, a with Dan Sheehan beside him and McCarthy and Jenkins behind him in the row, it's a fair bit of ballast and hopefully now it'll give him a bit of confidence and he'll he'll get a chance to show what he can do. Uh, so that's, uh, it's great to see that, um, yeah, all that young talent is uh, hopefully going to get a chance to uh, really settle in with some of the uh, more experienced players. Absolutely, and it's a, it's a, it's a good opportunity for them to do it because we'll we'll, we'll have a look at the Dragons um, uh, squad now, and uh, they're one of those teams. And I, I I really I wish all teams would do this when they when they announce their team on the website. Not only do they put the players that are there, but they also have a list of the players who are unavailable, and and that's extra. 
big list for I think there's I think there was 15 um, altogether in the in the team for in the in the list for um, for Newport that are unavailable. But uh, there, there's some there's some uh, couple some units in this team that that, that are quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, they'd had a tough time of it this season. Um, with the uh, that the barbarians matched certainly not helping them. Um, in terms of uh, player availability, on top of that horrific injury list, um, they lost to Edinburgh by five and Cardiff by seven at home already this season. Um, but that thirty-one point tonking against Munster really that's. That was that was horrific. Nobody nobody likes to see that. Well, a monster sport is probably fairly happy with it, but other than that, I think nobody wants to see that. And um, they do have six returning Welsh internationals now off the back of that Barbarians match: Kai Evans, Rio Dyer, Elliot D, Lloyd Fairbrother, Dan Lydiot, and Aaron Wainwright. Um, you know, they have a decent mall. They've got a they've got some backs that can definitely do damage if they can get them into space. Um, you know, any back row with Dan Lydia in it is going to be dangerous, but they haven't won in Newport since October 2022, um, which is a, a hell of a thing to say about your own home record. Uh, so it's it, they're really up against it, even with their their internationals coming back this week. Yeah, it's it's an interesting lineup, and Lydia, it's um, it's interesting. We didn't we didn't mention Will Connors uh, starting for Leinster as well, so it's kind of a chop tackle off uh, <laughs> between the two of them. So it'd be interesting. Yep. It'd be interesting to, when when either side is in possession. It'd be interesting to see how many how many trees get felled uh, in the process. But no, it's um it's uh, yeah, it is the back row that draws the eye of that line out all right. But they have had a lot of injuries throughout the squad, uh, so so we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Okay, we'll move on to the officials now. The referee is uh, Jean Luc. Uh, uh, Gnecki. Uh, that sounds like something I ordered as an appetizer a couple of weeks ago, but um, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Ian Davies, Mark Butcher, the assistants, um, and the weather for Newport on Sunday afternoon is uh, supposed to be rather cloudy uh, with not much wind, twenty five percent rain. Um, so we well, we always say the rainy night in Newport. So it'll be Sunday lunchtime, but uh, we'll, we'll see what we'll see what happens. Um, that moves us on to. Um, the other rugby this weekend, now recording on Friday evening, there's actually a match in progress as we're talking, uh, Zebra Sharks, and there's an Interpro later on. But of, of all the other games this weekend, which one are you looking forward to the most? The Interpro. You know, yeah. really, it's it's very predictable. But, you know, I did actually have a look. I was like, no, don't be so biased to the Irish teams, kid. Just go and have a look. And yeah, it was like, a, yeah, it's the Interpro. It is. It's it's a really interesting matchup, you know. Um International players back for Ulster Munster as well. Uh, Choo Choo Stew back in the centre for Ulster. Um, Ian Henderson on the bench. Rob Herring on the bench for his 230th record appearance. Um, All-time record appearance for Ulster um, if he comes off the bench, which no doubt he will. Um, Munster leaving behind some of the internationals that they may have chosen to call up for this as well makes it a little bit spicy are they thinking they can get one done without them or, or are they kind of sacrificing it for maybe a punt on the european matches later on it's kind of hard to tell what they're thinking is um but uh it remains to be seen uh it's going to be it's going to be pretty full-blooded as all as all interpros always are but they're always fun Absolutely. How are you calling it though? Because no, no pressure apart from the fact that when this goes out, it'll probably be over. So, <laughs> so let's, I... let's let's hear what you're saying. I think I I I think I put uh, I think I put an Ulster win. I'm a Super Brew. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, that's actually that's that's that that's my feeling on this as well. Is I I mm. kind of I fancy Ulster for it, not by much. Um. Yeah, I think I had Ulster by four for this one. Um. Yeah. I think they have. I think they they have a need. And I think they're probably they're 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 I think they're a bit more used to the pitch at this stage as well, and yeah, I think I'm not a huge fan of Billy Burns, but he's fairly reliable in what they need out of him at the moment. Um, and yeah, you're le- monster leaving behind Piero Mahoney, Conor Con- Murray, Ty Byrne, Dale Coin. That's that's an awful lot of um experience to leave behind. So yeah, I'm just shading it towards Ulster. 
Okay, the more words we use, the more silly we look. Uh, if it went, if it ends up going the other way, but uh, it'll be we'll entertainment, entertainment value, just entertainment all entertainment all value just, either way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, speaking of predictions, let's let's move on to our uh, one for the for our match at uh, Leinster v Dragons on Sunday. Yeah, um, I had a look at the weather myself actually, and the the the, the weather reports I was coming across look absolutely horrendous it's going to be a downpour on sunday afternoon by all accounts um but i'm not sure that's going to be either here or there um I've looked at it up down sideways and crossways i can't see anything past really a fairly resounding leinster win even in bad weather i see this going two scores plus yeah we've seen i mean we have had some tricky tricky outings there in the past um but um i mean just just on paper anyway looking at it i mean it, 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 the expectation really should be for that so uh, we'll, we'll see we'll see how that goes okay listen man listen thanks Kino, for harping with us today looking forward to having you on again soon man thanks no problem at all thanks jeff and uh, also thanks to you all for tuning in to our latest preview show enjoy the match wherever you are be sure to follow us on all the usual social media channels we will of course have a wrap pod for you this week be recording on monday evening this time but with a sunday match hopefully you'll be able to help us out by liking sharing and subscribing in the meantime stay safe everyone slant